So I finally made the sewing and cutting table of my dreams and I'm sharing the process with you today so maybe you can make your own too. Hi, my name is Gwen, and if you're new to the channel, welcome. Over here on my channel, I usually share my vintage inspired sewing tutorials and related crafts. So if you know me from Instagram, especially in the years of 2019 to 2020, you will know that I was living in a small apartment where the living area was only about 200 square feet, and that was the spot where I used to cut, sew, work out and everything. Um, now that I've got a little bit more sewing space, I finally got the chance to make the sewing and cutting table of my needs and my dreams. Now before we get into the process of putting the table together, I just want to take a moment to talk about ergonomics and how it applies to sewing. Ergonomics is the study of people and how workplaces are designed to prevent injuries. And these injuries are usually caused by things like repeated movements and poor posture. Those years that I talked about when I was living in the small apartment, it was hard. And I would have to take frequent breaks in between making stuff just so that I don't actually end up with a backache the next day. If you are a small business owner and you spend a lot of hours at the desk sewing and cutting fabrics, you really want to make sure that you are actually putting yourself in a, in a safe position and not putting your own body at risk. Big disclaimer, I am not an expert in ergonomics, but what I've learned and what I'm sharing today is things that I've found from research and also things that I know from my experience working in healthcare. Occupational health and safety guidelines suggest that the ideal height of the table while you're cutting and standing should be a couple of inches below your elbow. And the ideal height of the table for when you are sewing and sitting at the same time um, should be at or slightly above your elbows. So before my husband and I came together to um, draw up the plans for my DIY sewing and cutting table, I came up with a couple of criteria that I knew I wanted my perfect table to have. And number one, that's having the best height for sewing and cutting. So obviously we would need adjustable legs. And I got an adjustable desk frame from Amazon. And the second criteria that I had was having a width that's wide enough for me to cut most of my sewing projects. I did want it to at least fit my 24 inch wide cutting mat. And so I ended up purchasing a 30 inch wide acacia wood tabletop. And the third criteria I had on my wish list was having a nice tabletop that would be um, really photogenic, uh, that would look good in my photos, and it would be like a nice backdrop for me when I film sewing tutorials and stuff because I am gay. Um, and the acacia wood top that we got comes in this natural wood color, which is really similar to the floor that I already have in this sewing space, so I decided to stain it white. And here is the list of materials that I used for my DIY sewing and cutting tape. And here's how I put the table together with a lot of help from my husband, especially when it came to assembling the desk frame because it's really heavy, which is good in the sense that it's nice and sturdy. Um, but obviously I was really struggling a lot with the weight of the desk frame. If you can actually find a tabletop, like something from Ikea that's already finished and in the color that you want, you pretty much only have two steps. Fix the desk frame and attach it to the tabletop. That's it, you're done, congratulations. But because I'm a bit picky and I want to stain it white, there were a few more steps involved. So we put the desk frame together and then we screwed it onto the tabletop. Um, and before screwing it on, we also uh, took extra time to make sure that we had the desk frame centralized on the tabletop. And this is where having a measuring tape and a 2D pencil really helped. Um, as you can see from this picture, we made sure that um, the measurements of A, the marking in red, is the same for, for all four sides of the table and also the distance of B, 
the marking blue is the same for all four sides of the table as well. This might sound counterintuitive in the sense that we're kind of repeating the step, but we screwed the desk frame onto the tabletop and then we removed them again. This is because I wanted to have the holes drilled before staining the tabletop. I just had this idea that I really didn't want to be spending too much time finicking with the tabletop that is stained because I didn't want it to be scratched or something. I, just, I don't know. Now, here is how I stained the tabletop. The brand that I use is called Minwax, and it's really just a brand that's available from Lowe's locally, and so that's the brand that I went with. The color of the stain that I got is called Simply White 275, and it's an oil-based stain that is supposed to be better for hard woods like the acacia wood tabletop that I've got. Now, this is truly the most tedious part of this DIY project. There are a lot of steps involved and this is how I did it. I started off with sanding the tabletop down with the medium sandpaper and then I prepped the tabletop with the pre-stain. The pre-stain really made a big difference in staining. So the underside of my table was stained without the pre-stain and you can obviously see that it really did not take the stain very well at all. So I applied the pre-stain and then I applied the Simply White 275 oil-based stain and then I sanded it off with a medium sandpaper again. So that was the only layer of color stain that I used, okay? Then I added a clear polycrylic top coat. It's supposed to be like a protective top coat. And then I sanded it down with medium sandpaper again. And then I added another layer of top coat, sanded it down with medium sandpaper again. And then I applied my third and final layer of the top coat and finished it off. This is really important. I finished it off with a fine 800 grade sandpaper. You want it to be like super smooth to the point where you can put your face on it, almost swim on it and put your like most precious silk fabrics on it. So the last step of using the fine 800 grade sandpaper, very important, do not skip it. Obviously with the pre-stain, the white stain and the top coat that I applied each time I actually gave it time to dry as per the instructions of the can. If you're thinking about making your own DIY ergonomic and adjustable sewing and cutting table, I hope this video is helpful in getting you started on thinking about how to put your own perfect table together. Don't forget to hop over to my blog for some additional tips on staining. If you're not planning on making your own table but have somehow ended up to this part of the video and have a table that works really well for you, please leave a comment in the comment section and let everyone know what table you're using so people who are not quite ready to build their own table can actually see those suggestions and maybe buy a table that works for them. And that's all for today. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section as well, but definitely go to my blog for more information and pictures. See you next time. Bye.